Replacing the LCD panel. A notebook display almost always uses LCD technology, although Samsung recently released a notebook that uses OLED display. It is expected that laptops will one day use plasma display because plasma is expected to use only about 20% as much power as LCD and gives better quality display than LCD. Some laptop LCD panels use LED backlighting to improve display quality and conserve power. Because the LCD panel is so fragile, it is one component that is likely to be broken when a notebook is not handled properly. If the LCD panel is dim or black when the notebook is running, first try to use the video port on the notebook to connect it to an external monitor. After you connect the monitor, use a function key to toggle between the LCD panel, the external monitor, and both the panel and monitor. If the external monitor works, but the LCD panel does not work, then most likely the problem is with the LCD panel assembly. If the LCD display is entirely black, most likely you will have to replace the entire LCD assembly. However, if the screen is dim, but you can make out that some display is present, the problem might be the inverter. The inverter converts DC to AC used to power the backlighting of the LCD panel, see figure 1974. Check with the notebook manufacturer to confirm that it makes sense to first try replacing just the relatively inexpensive inverter board before you replace the more expensive entire LCD panel assembly. If the entire assembly needs replacing, the cost of the assembly might exceed the value of the notebook. You also need to know that LCD panels that use LED backlighting don't use an inverter because the LED backlight uses DC power directly from the motherboard. Sometimes, a notebook LCD panel, including the entire cover and hinges, is considered a single filed replaceable unit, and sometimes components within the LCD assembly are considered FRUs. For example, the filed replaceable units for the display panel in figure 1975 are the LCD front bezel, the hinges, the LCD panel, the inverter card, the LCD interface cables, the LCD USB cover, and the rear cover. Also know that an LCD assembly might include a microphone, webcam, or speakers that are embedded in the laptop lid. For other laptops, the microphone and speakers are inside the case. In addition, a Wi-Fi antenna might be in the lid of the notebook. When you disassemble the lid, you must disconnect the antenna from the bottom part of the notebook. Some high-end notebooks contain a video card that has embedded video memory. This video card might also need replacing. In most cases, you would replace only the LCD panel and perhaps the inverter card. The following are some general directions to replace an LCD panel. 1. Remove the AC adapter and the battery pack. 2. Remove the keyboard. 3. Remove the screws holding the hinge in place and remove the hinge cover. Figure 1976 shows a notebook with a metal hinge cover but some notebooks use plastic covers that you can easily break as you remove them. Be careful with the plastic ones. 4. Remove the screws holding the LCD panel to the notebook. 5. You're now ready to remove the LCD panel from the notebook. Be aware there might be wires running through the hinge assembly, cables, or a pin connector. Cables might be connected to the motherboard using ZIF connectors. As you remove the LCD top cover, be careful to watch for how the panel is connected. Don't pull on wires or cables as you remove the cover, but first carefully disconnect them. 6. Next, remove screws that hold the top cover and LCD panel together. Sometimes, these screws are covered with plastic or rubber circles or pads that match the color of the case. First use a diddle pick or small screwdriver to pick off these covers. You should then be able to remove the front bezel and separate the rear cover from the LCD panel. For one LCD panel, when you separate the LCD assembly from the lid cover, you can see the inverter card. Figure 1977 shows the inverter card being compared to the new one to make sure they match. The match is not identical but should work. 7. Disconnect the old inverter and install the new one. When disconnecting the ribbon cable from the old inverter, Notice you must first lift up on the lock holding the ZIF connector in place, as shown in figure 1978. 8. Install the new inverter. Reassemble the LCD panel assembly. 
make sure the assembly is put together with a tight fit so that all screws line up well. 9. Reattach the LCD panel assembly to the notebook. Working inside an all-in-one computer An all-in-one computer uses a mix of components sized for a desktop computer and a notebook. Just as with notebooks, you'll need the service manual to know how to crack the case and replace internal components. Also, for some components, such as the motherboard and power supply, you'll need to buy the replacement component from the all-in-one manufacturer because these components are likely to be proprietary as with many notebook components. For specificity directions about replacing parts in an all-in-one, see the service manual. Let's get the general idea by looking inside the case of the Lenovo ThinkCenter all-in-one shown earlier in Figure 19-1. First, remove all disks and other devices, shut down the computer, and disconnect all cables. Lay the computer FL it with the LCD panel down on a soft cloth or other surface that will not scratch the screen. An anti-static pad works well. To open the case, push the two clips on either side of the case cover outward as you push the back of the case upward toward the top of the computer. See Figure 1979. The case cover can then be removed and laid to the side. Figure 1980 shows the computer with the case cover removed. Notice in the figure the hard drive is a 3.5-inch drive appropriate for a desktop system, and the memory modules are so dims appropriate for a notebook. So goes the hybrid nature of an all-in-one. The fan and heat sink look more like that of a notebook computer, but the processor socket on the motherboard is a desktop processor socket, another hybrid design. Several components are easy to exchange in this all-in-one without further disassembly. For example, the mini keycard for wireless connectivity, shown in figure 1981, is easy to get to as is the CMOS battery that you can see to the left of the card. To remove the hard drive, simply lift up on the blue handle shown in figure 1982 and slide the drive attached to the blue bracket out of the case. You then have to remove the bracket from the old drive, install it on the new drive, and reinsert the bracket with the new drive. The optical drive is removed by pressing a release button at the back of the optical drive and then sliding it out of the case. After the hard drive and optical drive are removed, you can get to the video inverter, which is secured to the case with two screws, see figure 1983. The SODIMs shown in figure 1984 are to the right of the mini keycard. The processor is underneath the heat sink, and the heat sink is held in place with four screws shown in figure 1984. Remove the four screws and lift the heat sink up and out exposing the processor. The desktop processor socket works like the ones you saw in Chapter 5. To exchange the LCD panel is not as difficult as you might expect. The motherboard, power supply, drives, and other components are secured to a front bezel. This bezel is secured to the case with 13 screws along the four edges of the case. You can see several of these screws just inside the outer edge of the case in figure 1980. When you remove the 13 screws, you can lift out the bezel like a tray holding all its installed components. The LCD panel is then exposed, which is held in place with 4 screws. That will be all in this C-Tech episode tune into next Monday for troubleshooting notebooks. We love you all thanks for watching C-Tech. Start 1042. Thank <laughs> you.